Those flames are insane. That is so sweet. We can see this driver is good at the game. He's setting the car with the back end. Right here on the bridge, it's the same exact understeer look. That is what we like to see. You get BBS on him. You can run 15, 52. Hey Gameologist, welcome back to another episode of Experts React. My name is Chris Noons, professional driver for Mazda Motorsports, and today we're going to be checking out Need for Speed Heat, an OG game. I know a lot of you guys have grown up playing Need for Speed, so now we're going to check out the evolution of it, check out these new games, see what it's all about. Gameology is launching a new show called Ask a Gamer, where we ask 100 gamers like yourselves some fun and possibly polarizing questions. We would love for you, yes you, to be a part of the Show. We are now taking fan submissions for the next episodes. If interested, you could submit your footage in the link in the description below. We cannot wait to hear what you have to say. Let's dive right into today's video. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here we go. Of course, the famous Need for Speed load up screen. Okay, we got a lot of JDM cars, some sweet body kits. This is awesome. This looks like a street circuit we would actually race on. See, these load up screens are always so rad. This is the coolest intro. This might even be better than the game itself. Like I could just sit here and watch this. It's so interesting. So right now it's just kind of developing a storyline. Let's see what this cop has to say. Street racing has no place on public roads. All right, so no street racing allowed in Need for Speed. That's definitely interesting. Definitely, we're gonna have to get away with some of this as we're seeing right now. This has to be one of the most fun Simcade games I've played. The vehicle dynamics are definitely arcade-like. Obviously you have nitrous, you wouldn't have that in a real race car, but this is awesome. Getting to outrun cops. See, you get to do this on your living room without actually getting arrested. I don't like getting arrested. I've never been arrested and don't plan on it, so I don't street race. So it's fun, we can enjoy it from sitting on our couch. See, even though this game is is Simcade. I would actually call it Simcade because the cars look very nice. There's just something about the graphics in this game and the overall look. To me, it's very modern and futuristic looking. And I really enjoy that in these modern games. But there is a negative connotation that I have to give this game, and it's the sound of the exhaust. That just irks me. It bugs me because this car in real life would sound awesome. Looks like they're still trying to escape the cops. That's a sweet AMG GTR over there. I'm assuming it's the GTR. Don't quote me on that, but this is cool. I've personally never actually got to play this specific Need for Speed, but I would really like to. So I might need to come back for an expert's gameplay to hop on the console here on controller and see what we got. Cause th this is definitely a fun Simcade game to play. Oh, there goes a cop. He just looped it out. What happened? He lost his trash control. So as you can see, compared to other racing simulator specific games, this is a fun game to play with your buddies. This is a game where you can all get together, mess around, enjoy street racing, enjoy all the fun aspects that we play in video games. Nowadays, racing simulators are so intense and the competitions are so hard. You don't get a lot of fun racing like this, where you actually enjoy video games. And that's something important in today's culture is to actually enjoy video games. And not just simulators. And of course, we can still mod our cars. Look at that body kit. It's just awesome to see in a video game. Of course, these fun little blips they have at the end of missions and things like that. It's a lot of fun. You got your car wrecked. That's unfortunate. I really like the storyline in this game too. This is awesome. This reminds me of some fun games I used to play like Uncharted on PS4. The storyline is really cool. And not a lot of racing games include that in my opinion. So that's a very unique characteristic it has. Some games have a storyline, but they don't have snippets of this where they're actually acting, talking, and kind of walking through it. So the fact that we're including this and incorporating that in a racing game, it's really cool and unique. All right, sweet. So now we're running a 1200 horsepower Ford Mustang. Of course, a very fun car to drive in person. So it must be motor swapped because that's definitely not a 5.0 like we would typically see. Um, it almost sounds K swapped, which is interesting. Green tire smoke. And that's where we're bringing back this fun aspect of the game. It's not necessarily diehard serious sim racing. We get to do some free roam. We get to enjoy a 1200 horsepower Mustang that's motor swapped. It's really cool and, and interesting. And the free roam on this game is actually very nice. It reminds me of some other games such as Grand Theft Auto, where you get to free roam, but we have that vehicle customization aspect in this game. And the graphics are very good as well. So it makes it super satisfying and just outright enjoyable to play this driving game. 
You can hear the turbo blow off, just sounds awesome. So there we can see the drifting dynamics are not up to par with a lot of simulator games, but that is why it's Simcade at the end of the day. I do wish the drifting characteristics were a little better in the game. As you can see, when the driver flicked it sideways to that left-hand corner, the car was very tight and it kind of, it ended up stopping you so you couldn't over-rotate the car, which in my opinion, I wish they would let you over-rotate the car, even though it's somewhat of an arcade game, just to add a little bit more realism to it to kind of match what the graphics are showing. All right, so now we're, we're getting lined up for a street race. It's giving me Fast and Furious vibes right now. It's really cool, I really like that. I'm not too sure how much I like the water on the screen. I feel like they could have either not included that or made it a little, just they could have tweaked it a little bit. It's kind of pointless, they're just water droplets. That's interesting, okay. Just plow through signs. Again, if you're playing this game with your buddies, you're gonna have a great time, which I would assume. little floater. We got Carnage. This is a good race. This is this is interesting to watch. All right, if you're street racing in real life and you can wheel like this without completely wrecking your car, I'll be pretty impressed. Now, I'm curious to see if you could actually turn off traction control in this game because I haven't played. So it'd be nice to get some feedback in the comments with what you can actually do with tuning your car, tweaking your car, and how you guys can make this game more enjoyable for y'all listening to this. Because I would definitely be curious to see if we can get a little more angle in the car, a little more slip angle in some of these corners definitely would be some interesting characteristics as far as tuning, I feel like, that should be available. That was cool. It had a glitch effect after that hard landing. I like that they incorporated that. That is definitely something I have not seen in a lot of games is that glitching effect after hard impacts. Really like that they incorporated that. That makes it feel just a little more realistic. And it's those little fine details that us gamers really enjoy. Man, this guy's killing it. He is driving the wheels off this thing right now. I feel like even though this is ar arcade-ish, the car looks very nice and it replicates real life Mustangs relatively well, especially when they they flipped to the front angle like that. You can see the grill lights they have. It just looks, it looks very nice. And the turbo blow off is just sexy. We, we all love that as car enthusiasts. Something I also don't like about this game is see how we're on the slope of a hill and the puddles are maintaining the same. And there's lots of dry portions and still wet portions. It's kind of odd. Um, I wish for the water dynamics of the game, uh, they had the water layout a little better and kind of replicating real life just a little more, but that's just really being, we're really nitpicking right now, this game. Sorry, Need for Speed. I love you. <laughs> so something I like about this game, me personally, I've been paying attention to the exhaust flames. And in the past, you would notice that you would spit flames out of both exhausts. However, it varies on this from left to right, both, which adds a little bit of realism to the Simcade game, which personally I enjoy because in our race cars, we do spit massive flames. And when you have a modified 1200 horsepower Mustang, you're gonna be spitting flames and it won't continuously be out of the same exhaust. It's gonna alternate. You're gonna have little variances, so it's cool. And of course you get those awesome finish lines. They just look so rad. Ouch, that sucks. But that did show us actually something pretty nice is the damage you get. So if you do notice, the damage will not completely wreck your car, but you can see a little bit of damage to the front frame rails on the car. The hood got a little bit crushed up. So that is cool. They are incorporating damage physically, but it doesn't necessarily impact the performance of the car, which we can see he's absolutely hauling right now. And the car seems to be performing just fine and driving straight. So that is a perfect happy medium of realism, the arcade portion combined where you get that damage, you get the nice satisfying graphics, but at the end of the day, it's just an arcade game. And the crackles, even though this is not obviously a stock motor, the burbles on downshifts and everything, they sound they sound very nice. It's definitely enjoyable audio to listen to. It's not necessarily super realistic, but it does bring out the, the highlights us car enthusiasts enjoy about listening to our vehicles. And for me, that's important because if I'm playing an arcade game, I wanna enjoy the audio and not be like, take off my headphones, this is terrible. So this is, it's a good aspect they incorporated to it. It's very unique. And now we can see in the dynamic weather we have in the lighting, I really like this. It looks almost foggy. I really enjoy the graphics in this game. Like I've said several times, it's just very, it's very unique, lots of ways. And I really enjoy that.
All right, here we go. McLaren P1 GTR, and it's a 2015. These cars are awesome. This car looks exactly how it would in real life. Those flames are insane. That is so sweet. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I just can't get behind the drifting. I want to know what you all think in the comments because I feel like in racing games, drifting and sliding the car is important and especially the way it looks and feels while we're playing, right? And I feel like you can't get enough slip angle drifting in this game. That's just me personally. Drop it in the comments. I want to hear what you all think about the drifting aspect in this game. I just have a thing for McLarens. This is McLaren. Is so awesome. Turbo blow off sounds unreal. The one thing I wish they incorporated is the stock McLaren sound where they actually whistle. So when they're going by on a racetrack, you'll hear it's a nice little whistle and that they did not incorporate in this game, which is understandable. It's a very, very minor detail. But for me personally, being a McLaren fan, it's something I enjoy. And they actually have roto form wheels on this car. So that's telling me the customization aspect of this game is pretty darn sweet. Um, that you can get realistic mods with name brand parts for your car. So that is also cool because you can be street racing like this with your buddies racing a supercar, but then you can also put real parts on your car to hopefully actually give you a competitive advantage while you're racing against your friends. So very cool. Lots of very hardcore sim racing games such as iRacing. You really lack lots of customization. So I'm glad that game designated to having fun incorporated that. It's very awesome to see. Thank you Need for Speed. We appreciate it. those flames are so sweet. So this driver actually has decent racing lines. He's actually using all the track. He's hitting his apexes. He's hitting his marks. It's pretty sweet. For those of you who don't know what an apex is, I'll kind of walk you through it. Basically the lowest point of the corner. So that's where we come the shallowest on the corner. So that was an early apex when he came down low in the corner. Obviously he just straight line through there and a real apex. He missed the apex in that corner. So just something fun with your buddies. So you can pick up on that and start using that terminology. You're one step closer to being a professional race car driver. So now we didn't get that cool glitch effect. I'm kind of bummed about that. Maybe I just missed it. Yeah, I didn't see no cool glitch effect there. Now the shifts on this car sound very good and they sound super realistic to how an actual McLaren shift would sound. Let's hear it again. They sound nice. They sound really nice. And something I like about this game being Simcade is the damage you can cause to the surroundings to your course. So that driver just plowing through the lights. He's actually going at such a fast rate of speed in real life. If you were to hit a pole like that, it would most likely, in my opinion, look similar to that. At least I would hope. I've never actually hit a pole going like 200 miles an hour, but I would hope it would look like that if I were to. So we'll, we'll all think that because I don't think any of us have floating the car through the corner. So something important in this game I want to make note of right now is the actual handling of the car is very tight. It wants to understeer. And that is something that occurs in lots of racing games is the baseline setup for the cars are going to be set up so they understeer. So you can actually see this driver trying to set in the car, get the back end to rotate. I wish, once again, even though this game is Simcade, I really wish they incorporated the cars to be a little more free, meaning they want to rotate a little more at the rear end. It just makes the game game a little more fun and adds a little more skill behind it. This is a very safe setup. It's easy to really push the car, overshoot corners. You're not going to spin out and lose your race. And maybe I'm missing that with the tuning aspect of the game as I haven't seen it yet. However, for the most part, it is hard in a lot of these games to get the cars to actually corner properly and have a realistic feel. But if you can get the knack of it and you know how to trail brake into the corner, set the back end of the car in properly, you can actually get fast at doing it. it might not be as enjoyable to play but it can separate good drivers from the bad drivers that would understand okay i need a trail break in here because the weight's going to transfer to the front of the car and help me win that race like this driver just did right here so it's really cool as well kind of like forza we did in a different video where right after you finish your races you can just go straight into a free drive session which is awesome and then look he already has the cops on him because he's hauling at 370 kmh so this is cool
Yeah, this game is very fast paced. It's almost like you never have a free second because you always have the cops on you, you're entering a race, you're trying to make money. And that's awesome to see because then you never really get bored of the game. They're always throwing a new specific twist at you. And for the most part, for me in particular, I can get relatively bored of a game pretty fast. But if me and my buddies are on this game three, four hours, the time will just kind of fly by because you're always so busy doing some sort of mission, free roam, escaping the cops. It's very entertaining. And that's a very important characteristic to have in a game. And something I enjoy about this game as well is I guess we can call it the depth of field, our vision point for the game. As we're actually driving and we're always looking ahead, you can actually see far ahead in this game, which is nice when you're going at these speeds. It's very important to be able to see far ahead. You always have to look ahead and it's nice they incorporated that. So that way we know exactly where we can position our car throughout the streets as we're trying to carve up our best racing lines. Makes it fun for sure. So there it is. He lost the cops. He managed to escape. We can see he had some awesome racing lines. It's just satisfying. The game is satisfying. The look of it, the sound of it, the unrealistic drifts. I guess I have to bite the bullet on that and just accept the fact that the drifts don't look real in this game. But it's just a satisfying game. There's that NOS kick. He had those blue flames coming out. And I really like that lots of these objects he's been hitting, such as trees, telephone poles, signs, don't stop the car. Lots of older Need for Speeds, you would hit certain objects and it'll just stop you. That gets frustrating. That gets very frustrating when that happens. So I'm glad that lots of objects you can just plow through because in real life, if you plow through an object at that rate of speed, you're going straight through it. All right, sweet. Now we have to check out a vintage Dodge Charger. This is gonna be sweet with 1500 horsepower. And this thing is absolutely slammed to the ground, completely static. Look at this guy. Oh no, he's bagged. This guy is on bags. This is respectable. So I thought we could only have coilovers in this game, but this just showed you can actually be bagged, which is cool. So I'm assuming online lobbies, we can have some car meets. This is a cool aspect to have. You don't necessarily need to have bags in this game because what, are you gonna scrape on the curb and no damage will really happen? But it is cool they incorporated that so that way if you wanted to take some cool photos in the gameplay you have that option to be able to say hey look i'm on bags i spent an extra thousand dollars on my credits on these bags it's pretty funny and fun that they incorporated that Something I want to make note of as well is all the turbo blow-offs have the same exact sound effect. It is identical, at least with the past three cars we've looked at. If you've noticed that, they all, they all have the same. They're all identical. And that almost gets a little old because I feel like with different PSI boosts, different blow-off valves, everything, all factors included, they should all have a little bit different of a sound. However, with this car, they are running a V8 and the motor sound of the car is different and unique and enjoyable to listen to. So with the audio covered now, let's focus on how this car would handle different compared to that McLaren, because this is a 1960 Dodge Charger. It is going to be slightly different, I would assume, and I hope they make it slightly different. So that way you could have advantages by running different cars. So let's see if they incorporate that. Let's pay attention to the gameplay. Those drifts look identical. Let's check out the understeer. Let's pay attention now that the front of the car reacts to the corners. We can see this driver is good at the game. He's setting the car with the back end. Right here on the bridge, it's the same exact understeer look. So I'd be curious and I would enjoy playing this game on a controller, how the game would feel in my hand. I would want to know if I can get that advantage in different cars because right now by looking at it, this car looks like it's handling just like the McLaren. But at the end of the day, it doesn't matter because the graphics are so darn enjoyable to look at. It just makes it, it makes it worth playing the game. And something really nice about it, and they've really been tackling this on newer games, but I think Need for Speed might be the leader in this category, is the paint on the cars. The way it reflects light, and it could just be the city environment we're in at night, but it's second to none. It's something I've never seen in a racing game, is reflections like this. There is a game, and lots pretty popular right now, Gran Turismo 7. They have some similar characteristics as far as paint, getting reflections off the car, some lens flares, but you can't quite see as much detail in it as you can with Need for Speed. So Need for Speed, you got my check. That is awesome that you incorporated this reflection paint debt we get as we would in real life. There it is, started a cop chase. I actually started a cop chase in the middle of a race. So that is pretty cool. And he escaped it in the middle of the race. 
And I do like on this game, since we are racing through a street circuit, if you shift your eyes up on the screen, it actually gives you indicators for when the corner is coming up, which is very nice. So if we shift our eyes up, we can see in 170 meters, kilometers, whatever they have it set on, you actually have a corner. It tells you what direction, how much corner angle it has, which is pretty cool because at the end of the day, these aren't going to be racetracks we're familiar with. These are street racing courses. So it makes it a little more enjoyable to play the game when you kind of know where the track's going. You're not just clowning the wall as every other corner. So there it is. Is. Now we get to check out the menu a little bit, kind of scroll through, check out some different racing events, tells you how much credits you're gonna make. So now here we go again with the rain. Let's see, now it's raining a little harder than what we've seen in the, the beginning of this video. So I'm curious to see what the screen's gonna do. So yeah, it's still those little water droplets. It's okay. It's okay. We'll accept it. We'll accept it. We'll take it. At least it's showing that it is raining. So that is nice. to Chris Noon's dad talk. So the biggest thing in racing is enjoying driving slower cars fast, rolling momentum, not necessarily having all these cars with 1200 horsepower. Build a fun, good looking, tasteful car that has 400 horsepower, 500 horsepower, something that's a little slower, but it forces you to drive better. Not only make you a better driver, a safer driver, learn how to play the games better, but you're also gonna enjoy driving the slower cars faster. It's a lot fun to drive a slower car faster than a faster car slow. All right, 1200 horsepower Ferrari. Sweet. So now we can actually hear the different sounds in the motors as we're switching through. Does it actually tell us what motor we're switching to? Yes, it does. So that's a V12. So I'm not necessarily sure. As I mentioned earlier, these sounds would replicate how it would sound in real life or other simulators, but it has a unique sound and every motor they've included as far as customizations has a different sweet sound effect to it. And that is very nice because when you're playing different simulator racing games, all the cars are going to sound as close as they possibly can to real life. This, they didn't have that objective. They just wanted them to sound like a V12, like a V10, like a V8, like a super low liter three cylinder with a turbo. So it's very, it's very nice that they included their own sound effects and didn't try to replicate real life. I enjoy that. Okay, so now we can actually do different drivetrain, different clutches, that is awesome. But once again, slower cars fast, not faster cars slow. So make sure you check it out next time you're playing your game. Wow, you get a lot of different differential options. That is awesome. And it said off-road differential. So I'm curious about that. They have lots of off-road aspects of this game. Let's check it out. Let's see what else he's going to do. All right, sweet. Now we'll check out some of these name brand components. I'm assuming we can put on the car. Nope, just different hoods for now. I'm really interested in the wheels and see. Okay, yeah, so we can get speed hunters. That's pretty cool. We got the carbon front bumper, all carbon parts. So, so far, some of these components obviously aren't gonna be name brand, but there is lots of tuning options. There isn't just one specific front splitter or diffuser you can get. There is, by the same carbon manufacturer on the game, you can get six different looks. That's really cool that there's this much customization. We'll go with a wide body look, of course. Why wouldn't we go with a wide body Ferrari and Need for Speed? In my opinion, I would give the customizations on this game a six out of 10, maybe a se nah, seven out of 10 for sure. I wish there was more name brand components, more name brand mods you can put on your car. I wanna see what different wheels we can get, like I mentioned earlier, because I saw one of the cars was running Rotoform, which are wheels I like, they're good wheels. And we do have some name brand parts. different exhaust tips. That's pretty cool, you can go pretty in depth. I've, I've actually never seen a game where you can modify your exhaust tips. Pat on the back need for speed, that is pretty awesome. All right, here we go. This is the moment we've been waiting for. That is what we like to see. You get BBS on them, you can run 15, 52, Rotoform, SSR. Wow, that is awesome. So they really nailed it with the wheel options here, which is cool. That's good to see. Never even heard of those wheels. I don't even wanna to try to pronounce that. You guys might clown on me for that, but I'm not even gonna try. And he ran those wheels, of course. You can change the profiling. This is awesome. I like all the options we have for wheels. You can really give yourself that tasteful look and go for whatever look you're trying to, trying to go for. I think the meaty setup would look pretty cool actually on that, but okay, we'll let them run a little bit more slim. 
You can change the nitrous color, that's pretty cool. Backfire color, that's cool. Now, once again, realism, not necessarily the best, but the unique aspects makes it just different and different than other racing games. At the end of the day, that's why there's Need for Speed fans out there is the unique fun aspects of these games. But I do want to see what coilovers we can run or bags because we did see on that Dodge that he was bagged. So for the stance, it didn't even give us that option here. Yeah, I don't know about you, ladies and gentlemen, but I'm enjoying watching this gameplay quite a bit. This is very, it's very enjoyable to watch. And that's important. All right, so now we'll check out some daytime gameplay. I'm really curious to see how the paint's going to look in the daylight. Let's pay attention to some lens flares. We'll get depth of the paint. So there it is, right rear quarter panel, we're getting those lens flares. It's almost like this is like HDR gameplay for that high dynamic range. I like it a lot. I like the daytime. I like all these different colors they're incorporating. The depth, the field, and the paint. We can still see the flames, awesome. We actually haven't really seen the road dry yet. So that's telling me that the dynamic weather in this game might need to be tweaked a little bit because we do enjoy driving on dry snow. So I'm kind of curious to see if they include lots of snow, dry weather in the game. So yeah, that would definitely be some interesting characteristics to know for sure. So that is the end of our gameplay clip. There's lots of positive connotations and negative. However, the game overall gameplay and enjoyability we can get out of the game is a solid 10 out of 10. Who doesn't enjoy these arcade games that include realistic characteristics? You can just sit down and enjoy having a good time with your buddies. It's awesome and Need for Speed killed it in lots of these areas and they have improved from previous games with blowing through objects and lots of just lots of interesting characteristics like that. I really enjoyed looking at this game and this game has lots of very good characteristics and just like that we're all the way through all of our content for this episode it's just a fun game to sit down and enjoy with your buddies lots of it is just bringing the car community together if you would like to follow my professional racing career and some of my sim racing content i will be pushing out follow me on instagram at chris the number two and then noons like dunes but with an n if you want to check out some more sweet gameplay and reactions like this make sure you check out more videos just like this on gameology's facebook and youtube channel it was an awesome time walking y'all through Need for Speed Heat today. See you guys in the next video. Yeah, you want me to say that? Need for Speed Heat. Do, 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 do. Just experts react. Okay. Sweet. Is it fine if I say welcome back to another episode of Experts React? Okay.